Hi Rose, today I'm going to be doing my Disneyland Paris top 10 tips and tricks. Now I don't really consider myself an expert on Disneyland Paris, I have only been twice but I do do a lot of research, I read a lot of forums, I watch a lot of Disneyland Paris videos on YouTube so I would say I do know quite a bit about it. So my first tip is if you are staying in a Disneyland Paris hotel go down for breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning because afterwards it just gets heaving even if you're in a non-busy period or even if you're off peak we went in february which is pretty much the most dead time of the whole year and even half past seven quarter past seven and it started to get really busy so i would definitely recommend going down for breakfast at seven o'clock even if you're not heading out to the park straight away sometimes we just go down for breakfast and then we'd go back to the room and get changed tip number two is to take a lanyard for all the bits of paper that you get we had so many little bits of paper we had our disneyland paris tickets we had fast passes if we got them we had early entry pass to the parks and there's just loads of different bits of paper and you're just faffing around with all of them trying to get them out your purse so i would definitely recommend to take a lanyard we forgot this time which is weird because i usually do wear lanyards in disney so most definitely take one or buy one when you're there tip number three is watching the parade from fantasyland we did watch the parade from Main Street and Fantasyland when we went and we found that from Fantasyland it was just a much more enjoyable experience. Firstly, there wasn't as many people around so it wasn't as busy, there wasn't pushing and shoving, there wasn't people trying to balance the cameras on your head. Whereas on Main Street it was people pushing and shoving trying to get to the front and some guy literally put his camera on top of Rachel's head, no joke, like he had his camera like this and he just rested it like on her head and she was just like what was going on so gets a lot more busy on main street even though you might think it's like a better background setting or something for like photos or you know, the castle in the background and all that from fantasy land you get a lot more character interaction characters notice you more because there's not as many people around and it's just less stressful plus you don't need to get there as early we found from main street we were waiting for like 45 minutes and then people started to like line the streets but in fantasy land you can pretty much go five minutes before the parade we did that on like our second to last day or something we went like five minutes before the parade started and there was just loads of space and we just found a little speck and it actually turned out to be like the best parade experience that we had we got loads of character interaction and it was just dead good so definitely go and watch the parade from fantasy land tip number four is about characters it's hunting for characters the best place to probably find them in the main disneyland park is frontierland adventureland and main street there's a few character meeting spots in adventureland so near the wheel you can meet like peter pan captain hook smee we saw them all out there's a bit near the hakuna matata restaurant where you can meet like blue rafiki timon characters like that so kind of jungly inspired characters and we also found a few not wandering characters because they still had character attendance with them but like goofy and chip and dale did pop up near the cowboy cookout near pocahontas village so they kind of popped up occasionally and it actually turned out to be one of my favorite character meets i reckon because goofy just gave me loads of attention because there was like nobody there like the character was literally just waiting around for people like hmm what should i do now so i just like ran over to goofy and gave me a big hug and it was just dead cute i loved it also on Main Street as well, we saw a few characters, especially near the hub area at the bottom of Main Street. We saw like Chip and Dale, the Winnie the Pooh lot. Did we see anyone else? It was just mostly like the main characters that we saw on Main Street. Characters also do appear in the studios around the production courtyard area, especially for stars in their cars. And apparently people have seen like Stitch wandering around and things, but we didn't really see any wandering around studios. Also Fantasyland as well, at the back near Alice's Curious Labyrinth, you always get the Alice in Wonderland characters out there. So we saw Tweedledum, Tweedledee, we saw Mad Hatter, we didn't see Alice out and Queen of Hearts as well just wanders around. She is absolutely amazing. She just wanders around and just like sasses people and she just is like, Phew whatever you know to people and she just doesn't care she's amazing and the tip for the queen of hearts to get her attention is don't pay attention to her we watched her a few times and you know, she was giving up and giving people who didn't give her attention there was one time where i was filming one of the tweedle brothers and i was just you know, filming just chilling along and next minute queen of heart pops up in front of me and it's kind of just like whoa i wasn't even paying attention and so me and rachel just curtsied to her and we're like your majesty and she was just like yes she's like dead fabulous so it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> Tip number 
five is to go see Annie Magique and Cine Magique. Like they were really good shows and they weren't all in French as well. It was kind of like half in French, half in English. And they were really good, especially Cine Magique. I really enjoyed that one. And it was like half, some of it was in real life and then it was on the screen. And me and Rachel really enjoyed that. And also Annie Magique as well. It's got like loads of characters and it's like a stage performance. And I don't want to spoil it for you really, but they were really good. Something different from Florida. In Florida, we go in to see the shows and we're like, yes, Ercon. But in Disneyland Paris, we were like, yes, heating, central heating. Best thing ever, because we went during February and it was freezing. The next tip is going the Ratatouille single rider line. The normal queue time for this was, I think when we went, it was like an hour or something. That was like off peak season. But the single rider line, we literally just walked on and we were in the same cart as well, because the carts go in sixes. So it's like a row of three in front and then a row of three behind. So if you've got a family of four, then you're going to have them two seats at the end free. And it was just really good and we got to experience the ride and you're not going to talk on the ride anyway you don't really need to go in as a whole group we just pop in single rider and that was that next tip is exploring the back arcades they're unique to disneyland paris so they don't have them at any of the other disney parks it's behind main street so you've got main street and then you've got the shops and then behind them shops there's like walkways it was good for us because we could walk through them when we wanted to get out of the cold plus they weren't busy when you've got like main street emptying out after dreams if you go through the back arcades it's fine it's empty no one's there sorted plus they were dead interesting as well and the decorations dead good in them and there's like this little bit off the liberty arcade i believe it was and it's like i, don't know, I can't explain it explain it. it's like a tribute to america or something or a tribute to some presidents and it's just like a curtain and we never we were like oh is this a cast member bit i don't know let's peek our head around and have a little look and there's like these silhouettes and figures and it was actually a bit scary because it was all pitch black and there's these voices and things are moving and i was kind of like oh and it was just a little bit scary when you didn't know what it was <laughs> But yeah, that was pretty cool. The next tip is eating quick service before 5 p.m. I noticed that a lot of the quick service places closed early in the parks. So just after the parade, we were like, oh, let's go get some tea or something. And the nowhere was open. The only places that were open were like closer to the front of the park. So Casey's Corner, for example. I don't know, things in Adventureland and things in Fantasyland and it kind of seemed to work its way to the front for places closing. So when we wanted food at night, we couldn't get it. When we got our Paws Gourmands as well, because we had the half board dining plan, we got Paws Gourmands, which was kind of like a tea time treat. So that's between 3 and 6 p.m., I believe. And you can go get a donut, a hot chocolate, a drink, a cup of tea, something like that. And every time we went to try and get it after the parade, we couldn't find anywhere that was open to get it. So the places we tried were like Bella Norte and Fantasyland. We did manage to get on Hakuna Matata on the Sunday night, but then on the Monday, Tuesday, it wasn't open by exactly the same time. So I think it all depends on what the park hours are. Colonel Hathies as well, that was closed. I never saw that open. Even when we tried to get food at like three o'clock, it wasn't open. So, and I knew it was open that day because we'd walked past it earlier in the day and saw people going in. So make sure you do keep an eye out for the opening times of the quick service restaurants because things do close earlier. So speaking about closing early, Fantasyland does close about an hour before dreams so it can like prepare the area for the fireworks. Just be aware of that, that you might not want to be planning to do Fantasyland later on in the evening because it will close. It does have signs up all over the place saying, oh, Fantasyland's closing earlier. My last tip is extra magic hours. Extra magic hours in Disneyland Paris differs a little bit from Walt Disney World, wherein it's only certain places or certain attractions which are open. They do have it in summer or in peak seasons where it alternates between Walt Disney Studios and the Disneyland Park. But in off peak season, it usually is Disneyland Park. The only places which are open are Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. Adventureland and Frontierland aren't open at all during these extra magic hours. But what we found is only a few rides in Fantasyland and Tomorrowland were open. So the Pinocchio ride wasn't open, Snow White ride wasn't open. I think the only things that were open during Extra Magic Hours were Dumbo, the Teacups, Peter Pan's Flight, um, what else was it? Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, Star Tours. Is that it? I think that might be it. There wasn't that much choice open anyway, but when we did go, Space Mountain was down for refurbishment and so was the boat ride in Fantasyland. I think it's called Players Lester something or other. Oh yeah, the carousel was also open as well. So there wasn't that much choice. I've seen on some other Disneyland Paris vlogs that Pinocchio and Snow White do run sometimes during Extra Magic Hours. So I'm not sure why they didn't when we were there, 
but we found that we could do extra magic hours in just one day and we didn't have to do it then for the rest of the days even though we did sometimes and we did choose to go in earlier but as I guess it was expected though because a lot of things were down for refurbishment when we went I say a lot of things there wasn't loads of things down for refurbishment but there was a few bits which are down because of the time of year I guess and because that seemed to be really focusing on getting the park up to scratch for the 25th anniversary which is a good thing I guess because it does need a little bit of love there's certain things that I noticed which really want to speak down of Disneyland Paris because it's still Disney and I still really enjoyed the trip and I love the park it was so unique and so different to what I'm used to and it's got its own little touches but there are bits that do need a little bit of love and there are things that I noticed but to be honest I think most of the things that I noticed are probably only because I was a cast member and I was trained in kind of the whole show of things front if you get what I mean so yeah I'm a bit more fussy on things like that anyway that was my top 10 Disneyland Paris tips. As I said, I'm not a Disneyland Paris expert, but you know, I do my research and I think we really got a good experience of the parks when we went. We did a lot, especially because it was off peak season. I am definitely going to go back again in the future. It was my second visit to Disneyland Paris and this one was a lot more productive from the first time which I went. I'd like to experience it more in summer because the first time I ever went there I did go in August so it was a lot warmer. I'm more used to being in Disney parks in the heat rather than the cold. The cold did sometimes get a little bit like unbearable and I just want to be inside and be like oh I'm so cold. I did really enjoy my trip and it was just an amazing time. If you would like to see any more Disneyland Paris videos or whatever videos that you'd like to see then yeah just let me know. I will be hopefully doing videos on the run up to my Walt Disney World trip. I will be doing a part two of my planning video which I did like a few months ago. That part was about before booking your Disney holiday. This next part is going to be about what happens when you have booked your Disney holiday. So like ADRs, fast passes, my Disney experience, everything like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below on if you've ever been to Disneyland Paris before or if you're going to be going to Disneyland Paris. Bye! Okay, bye.